let's add some more custom blocks to Minecraft. All right, you found us back in IntelliJ once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding buttons, pressure plates, fences, fence gates, and custom walls to Minecraft. So quite the long list of stuff. The first thing I want to say is that everything I will type out here will be available to you in the description below, GitHub repository and individual gists as well, because I'm going to be copying over a lot of the JSON files because they, number one, are, you, you can't type them out. Like, it's actually ridiculous. We would be sitting here for two hours if I typed everything out. And also, it doesn't really add anything. I will, of course, explain the JSON files when we get to them. Otherwise, everything is available to you, so no worries at all. So in the mod blocks class, let's first of all register all of the items, or rather the blocks here. So this is going to be, first of all, the button and the pressure plate. Now, the button and the pressure plate are interesting because when I, you know, press shift twice and I put in, for example, the pressure plate block and making sure that this is ticked right here, then you can see I can go into it. But what you will find is that the actual constructor is protected. Now, this is an issue because this means that we can create a new pressure plate block. Of course, there's a way around it, and that is we have to create a custom class out of this. I'm honestly not 100% sure why that is the case, but we're just going to have to do it. Same with this button as well. So we're just going to go into the custom package, right-click, new Java class, and this is going to be the mod pressure plate block, and this will extend the pressure plate block. And I will hover over this, create constructor matching super, and then we're just changing the constructor here to public. And that's all that we need to do. And the same goes for the button. So this is going to be the mod stone button block. And this will extend the stone button block. I'm going to hover over this, create constructor matching super, and then make this public. And then we're fine. We basically never have to look at those two classes ever again, which is, you know, kind of a shame, but that is just how it's going to be. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to copy over the speed block ones and we're just going to say mithril underscore button and then same for the name here mithril underscore button and this is going to be the mod stone button block. Now the rest here can actually stay how it is. The only thing that we do need to add here is we need to add the no collision method right here. That's very important because a button actually doesn't have any collision associated with it. And then what we can do is we can just copy this over. Let's copy it over uh, actually just a few times here. I don't know, maybe this might be one too many. I'm not sure yet what we're going to see. So mithril underscore pressure underscore plate. And then the same in the name here, of course, making sure that we always change this. And this is then going to be the mod pressure plate block, which actually takes in two different parameters. This also takes in an activation uh, rule here. So we're going to say activation rule everything and then just add the rest. Now this does have collision, so making sure that we actually, you know, have this. So let's actually copy the pressure plate because all of the other stuff does have collision. So I'm making sure. So mithril fence is the next one. And that's going to be the mithril underscore fence. And this is a fence block. Now luckily this one just takes in only the fabric settings and those are all fine. So we can just keep them as they are. Then we have the fence underscore gate here, mithril fence underscore gate, and then mithril fence underscore gate here as well. Now this is of course a fence gate block, so fence gate block once again also doesn't have the activation rule of course, just this. Let's also format this a little bit different. There you go. Then we have the wall, and that's actually all that we need, so we only need one more. So this is going to be the mithril underscore wall, and then of course here as well, mithril underscore wall. And this is a wall block also without this. And there you go. Now all of our blocks, the five blocks here are registered. Now, of course, we need the JSON files. Now, what I want to say is that, of course, I'm going to copy them over, but you can either copy them from my GitHub repository or from the gists. You can also go down to the external libraries under this one right here, net Minecraft, Minecraft project mapped, and so on and so forth. If we expand this in the assets folder, Minecraft block states folder, you have all of the JSON files available to you. For example, for the block states, you can see the Acacia fence gate. So you can also copy those over. Same goes, of course, with the block models that we need later. So you can see, for example, the fence gate has four different models associated with it. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's a lot of JSON files that we need to copy over. And I highly recommend copying them over from here. It's just going to make your life a lot easier. So either do it from the Minecraft external libraries right here or go into the description, GitHub repository, and individual just also works fine. 
Let's first of all add the translation because I might actually forget this. So we have, what do we have? We have the pressure plates, the wall, the fence, gates, and the buttons. So let's just add this button, pressure plate, fence, wall, fence, gate. Yes, this should be all of them. And let's then start with the block states JSON files because those are going to be the most interesting anyway because they have, well, there's some new stuff in there that we have not seen yet. Let's just see. So we're immediately greeted with all of this, like the biggest wall of text that you've seen probably for a, quite a while. This is also why I said, you know, typing this out is just, why would I type all of this out? It's always going to be the same for a button. Makes no sense. So let's just go through and see what does all of this craziness mean? Well, what this craziness means is that I've already talked about different variants of blocks. So in our block states JSON files, in the past, you know, in the block, for example, we didn't have any variants. Now, in this case, we actually do have variants, as you can see, and those variants are determined by what are called block state properties. Now, the block state properties of a button are three of them. There's the face, there's the facing, and the powered. And depending on what the values of those three block state properties are, we're choosing a different model or modifying the existing model. So for example, you can see if we're facing east while on the floor and false, we're just taking the normal model right here so that we're defining in the mithril button.json file in the moment in the models block folder, but we're rotating the block around by 90 degrees. If we're all of a sudden facing west, we're going to rotate the well model by 270 degrees. So that's the general idea of this. You can also see, for example, if the face is a wall, right, then we make the UV lock true. UV lock true simply means that we don't rotate the texture uh, with the block as well. So that's just what this means. And then you can see we also rotate it in, around the X axis and the Y axis. So that's pretty much all that we're really doing here. And down here, you can see we're actually taking in a different model. So when we're actually powering it, so once you right click the button, you know that it sort of depresses a little bit, right? It gets a little bit smaller. So in this case, we're actually using a different model while it is powered. So that's also very interesting. So that's the, actually the general idea. It is, it just looks so complicated because there's three different block state properties. You know, it just means there's uh, a lot of complexity. Same goes for the fence. So the fence is a little bit different. The fence is actually a multi-part. And this is also not that crazy to think about because the fence post itself, you know, it's just a lone fence post sort of sitting in the world. We all know how that looks like. It's just a fence post. And when you put another fence post next to it, then, you know, sort of the connecting bit gets added to both of the, the fences and then the fences connect. So this happens with this multi-part. So we're always going to apply the normal fence post. So we always have the fence post. And then when there is a neighbor in the north, so this right here, when north is true, then we're going to apply the model fence side and we're going to apply that towards the north. So that's literally all that happens. We're just adding this side bit to the model and of course, the other fence, right, when we put down a fence and then put down a fence in the north of it, then the new fence, of course, has a neighbor to the south. So then both of them connect and the fence looks, well, complete. That's the general idea of the multi-part here. And then the pressure plate, I mean, that's like not actually that interesting. The wall works pretty much the same as the fence. And then the fence gate also just has a three different block state properties. So you can see just whether or not it's in a fence, in a fence, in a wall, stuff like that. That's pretty much all that there really is to it. So what we can do is we can just start to copy over the block model JSON files. Now those are, in fact, actually rather boring, to be honest. So most of them are very similar in many ways and actually not that well interesting. So let's just copy them over. How many are there? There's going to be 15 of them, so quite a few. Now most of them, you can see, just have different parents and they just always point to the mithril block texture, actually, because... The pressure plate, the wall, the fence, and the button, as well as the fence gate, all just have the mithril block texture, so we don't even need to add any textures here. And all of them are pretty much the same, so you can see it's always just the parent that changes. So you can just take any block model JSON, like the mithril block here with this texture, or rather this parent here, and just use it for, you know, the button pressed or the fence gate, stuff like that. So those are specific parents that you have to use but that's pretty much it. And they always are going to be the same for this. So there's no point in going through everything, every one of them. Like I said, it's all available to you. Get a repository and individual gist and also in the external libraries can highly recommend also taking a look at those. And then, well, similar to the other item models, right? We're basically just pointing to one particular block model for this. So we're going to have the fence, the fence case, 
the button, the pressure plate, and also the wall. There you go. So let's just copy those over as well. You can see in this case, we have Mithra underscore fence underscore inventory. Same for the button. There's a particular one for the inventory. And I think the rest are just pointing to the normal ones. So there's the wall inventory as well, actually, and then the normal pressure plate. But that's really all that there is to it. There is nothing that crazy going on, uh, all things considered. Right, that actually is all of the, well, JSON files that we need. Like I said, quite a few of them, and some of them, like the block says JSON files, quite complex, but overall, not too crazy when you think about it. It really is just the JSON files. You know, sometimes they can be a little frustrating because there's a lot of them, especially for those, you know, non-block blocks, as I like to call them, right, because they are blocks, but they're not really blocks, so... Right, and I did actually have one more block model JSON that we need, and that is the block button right here. And then all of the JSON files should be done, at least the model JSON files. There's actually another class of JSON files that we need, and that's going to be some tags. So in the Minecraft folder, in our block tags right here, we need to add the fences the and the walls. So I'm actually just going to copy this over once again, available to you, of course, in the description below. And GitHub repository and individual just as well. So you can see this has the mithril fence and this has the mithril wall in it. We have to add those. Otherwise, the fences will not connect to each other. Same with the wall. So we need that and then everything should work. So now everything is set up. So I guess let's see if it works. All right, friends, that's back in Minecraft. As you can see, all of the blocks have been successfully added to the game. You can see the fence here and the fence gate. Now I can open and close it. And also the walls here work perfectly fine. Also with the fence gate, for example. So everything working. Let's see. I can also step on this and it, well, emits a redstone signal. I can right click the button and it also emits a signal. So exactly how we would want it to. Right, and that is actually it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. Once again, everything available to you in the GitHub repository or in individual gists as well. But regardless of that, I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.